who has seen and heard the prophecies and the fulfillment and testifying to all these things so, and to heal all nations, this is the time and era to receive these words of truth. For all the saints to enter into heaven, for that very grace and for leading us, let's all give him a warm round of applause. For my hope, he is testifying and shouting to all the nations. Our promised pastor, as we welcome him, let's all give a warm, heartfelt round of applause. For Shincheonji, for this land, in order for heaven and God to come to this earth, for all that grace, let's all return. Let's all give a round of applause for this. Today, on September 25th, Shichunki Year 41, all together we will offer this service to our Holy Father God. Now we will have a time of silent meditation. I warn everyone who hears, I've, I am the root. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright one. Most Holy Father God, you who are the creator of the heavens and the earth and the source of all blessings and eternal life, through the tremendous love of Jesus who bore the cross, we are together with the Holy Spirit in heaven and together with our promised pastor, the chairman, we are offering up this service at the Holy City for that tremendous grace we truly want to give you thanks and glory. May this worship be pleasing to you at this time, Father God. We believe that you will give a tremendous amount of grace to all the family of the 12 tribes of Shinshinji and to all the pastors who love the word of God. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who is life and light. Amen. Let us all sing together, glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Please sit comfortably.
For this worship service, the tribe leader of Andrew Tribe will give the representative prayer. After the prayer, we will sing victory and glory to God the Father together with the choir. Father God, we are so grateful for for allowing us this precious day to welcome our promised pastor chairman to give the Shinjunji Word Seminar here at Masan Church Puzan James Tribe. For that grace, we truly want to thank you and give you all the glory. Holy Father God, we believe that the words of the Book of Revelation written about 2,000 years ago through Jesus' disciple John are the words of promise that record the events of the Lord's second coming. These words of promise are the final promises of God and are so important because they record who will be judged and who will be saved at the end of the world. Specifically, in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, it says that those who add to and subtract from Revelation will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, but will receive curses. Therefore, if one sincerely hopes to enter the kingdom of heaven, then one must know this book. Thus today, no one in heaven or on earth knows the prophecy or the fulfillment because God himself wrote it 2,000 years ago, sealed it with seven seals, and held it in his right hand. However, it is recorded that the sealed book will be fulfilled by Jesus who overcomes when he opens the seals of the book and that only through the promised witness who has seen and heard the fulfillment of the promises can one come to know the fulfilled realities. The promised pastor who testifies today, he is the only person, the one person who was chosen by Jesus directly as written in Revelation 1 and saw and heard the fulfilled realities of Revelation, as seen in Revelation chapter 22, verse 8. Also, as seen in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, he is the messenger of Jesus who was commanded to go to the churches and testify to the prophecies of Revelation, their true meaning and reality, which he has seen and heard. Father God, we pray that at this time, through the testimony of our promised pastor, we are able to see and perceive this amazing work of fulfillment of the book of Revelation that no one has ever seen or heard before. We pray that we're able to be those who can enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is the very place, this very work um, that shows that heaven is alive and that this fulfillment is happening. This is what's happening today. Let all the words religious know that the heaven and hell spoken of by all the words religions are coming to fruition today during the fulfillment of Revelation. If one adds to or subtracts from Revelation does not keep in, then it is hell. If one masters Revelation and keeps it, then it is heaven. The promised pastor who knows this is testifying today to the fulfillment of Revelation with a fervent heart to fulfill the command given by Jesus, so that not a single person goes to hell and not a single person can say that they did not hear this message. At this time, we, at this time, he will also be giving this word as a testimony to all the pastors, evangelists, and elders who are here today, and all the pastors and saints around the world who could not be here today, but are listening live on YouTube. Who am I according to Revelation, to the New Testament Revelation that is testified by the promised pastor? Am I someone who has truly been created according to the Bible? Please allow me to be able to perceive this and to understand. Let that be a time for us today. And also at this time, there are many reporters present. Please at this time, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, please allow the pastors who the pastor who has seen and heard the reality of the book of Revelation is at Shinjunji, and that the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom gathered around this messenger are the 12 tribes of the word, and they are the 12 tribes of Shinjunji. Please give us that time to realize this. 
May God's boundless grace and love be upon all those who come to this place. And in the name of Jesus, who atoned for our sins, we pray all of this.
네, 우리 우리 yes. 찬송을 아버지 하나님께서 For this praise, I truly believe that God receives that with, with much joy. Today is a, a wonderful and precious time, isn't that right? Today is Wednesday service for the 12 tribes, all saints. We are all together offering up the service. And here with us, for our promised pastor, as well as the reporters and all the other pastors and everyone around the world, and for all the students, as well as God and Jesus and all those who believe in them, we're all gathered here together to offer up the service together. Yes. Our God is a most gracious and loving God, correct? For our promised pastor here, for all the pastors here, and for all the reporters gathered here, this is the reality of God's kingdom, Shinchunji is. With us at this time, we can see if I have ears and eyes to see, I'll understand the true reality of where God is. This is the very place that those who sacrifice will be living, and this is where God will come. Isn't this the very work that God wants to fulfill? Those who we have to become those who God can acknowledge. And at this time, I pray and believe that this is a, a, a service that God would be so joyful for. And we will offer up many first fruits to God. And we're publicizing this to the entire world. This is the reality, correct? This is the fulfillment. Why? Why are so many saints gathered here right now at this time? It's because God is here with us. How do we come here? When we see in Revelation chapter 5, the book that is sealed, God opened it. And that very person in Revelation chapter 10, he is the one who received it. And that very pastor is the promised pastor of Shinchenji. And we believe that. This is a time that will receive the precious words of life. At this time, the sealed book is open. And just like that book is opened for all of us, let's make sure all of our hearts is open wide. And through the words of life and through the words of life of our promised pastor, we pray that you receive it with much joy and offer up this service and glory to God. For God and heaven that come to this place, we pray that this is the very place that they can come to. And for the words of life, our promised pastor, let's all receive him with a huge round of applause. Yes, family of faith, greetings. It's good to see you. Today, it is a wonderful day to offer service to God and receive His grace. And everyone, please be seated comfortably. God, in the New Testament, where, when, to who, and what words he has spoken, and also us today. Now, who am I according to these words? This is what we want to know, right? Yes, I'm sure. That when one era passes and another era passes, and we know that there is works of the past, and we see characters inside the scriptures. But truly, our hope, what we have longed and desired for, heaven, God, to be together with Him and to live with Him, we think about this, right? And that's why, who am I according to the scriptures? Isn't this what it is? that according to the scriptures, who am I? And also, have I truly been created according to this Bible, this New Testament? Am I one who is keeping these words? Yes, that is the case. And it's not just this. But when I'm, I am thinking of that from where to where am I thinking about? 
that according to the promises of the Bible, I cannot not act according to them, right? Then in Revelation, it says this, that if one adds to or subtracts from the words of this prophecy, one will receive curses and plagues. Then this is not just for the pastors of the world, but it's all believers who believe in God, they cannot come away from these words. Then suffering for suffering's sake, then one cannot be led to death then, right? Then if we think about Luke chapter 13, we see that the disciples asked Jesus, they asked regarding those who enter into the kingdom of heaven, they said, are only a few going to be saved? Then what did Jesus answer? He said that there will be many who try to enter but will not be able to. Then the people today who are going to church, aren't they carrying out a faith because they want to enter into heaven? But Jesus' answer was that there are many who try to enter but will not be able to. Then after the door is shut, that no matter how much one knocks, it's not opened, right? Then these are not words that are a joke, correct? These are not words that are a joke. Yes, that is so. So I, I was giving a seminar, and at that seminar, many pastors attended, and I asked the pastors at that time, I asked, what tribe are you from? And I still haven't been able to hear their answer. And everyone in the past, even in the past at the time of Moses and also at the time of the first coming of Jesus, then there were also things that took place at that time. And we know about the 12 disciples at that time. And so going up to heaven, Jesus' disciples, they are there. And Jesus' disciples, they are the foundation of the New Jerusalem. And even the colors are described. Yes. So it's not that they died and disappeared. And it's not that Jesus also died and disappeared, right? Yes, that is so. And so, if one adds to or subtracts from Revelation, one cannot enter into heaven. Then, everyone, what about for you? That in this whole world, all the pastors and believers, have you added to or subtracted to Revelation? That if there is one who says that they have not added to or subtracted from Revelation, I want to ask a question. A question. That someone who has not seen or heard or know, then what they say, wouldn't it be incorrect? That in Revelation chapter 1 all the way to chapter 22, there's one person who saw and recorded it, one person. And also, even when it fulfills that like that, there's one person who sees and testifies. So if someone say it's not like that. Say if it's a, not one person but two. Isn't that so? Then Revelation chapter 22 in verse 8 and in verse 16. If we see there that the one who has heard and seen these things is John, right? Then this John, this John who saw and heard what is he commanded is to testify to the churches, right? Then if that's the case, then the churches have to listen to this person, right? Then today, if we look at Revelation chapter 10, so I want to speak on several things. So Jesus, we see that in Ezekiel chapter 3, he's the one who received the open scroll and he testified, right? And so it wasn't just that it happened. But according to the prophecy of Ezekiel, Jesus, he received and ate the open scroll and then testified, right? And so one who has seen will know. Then today, 
that Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22, if you read all those chapters, we see the content that's there. That there's one who eats and receives the open scroll. And he has seen the entire fulfillment. And there's one person who has seen the fulfillment. Yes. Yes, that is the case. Then, with what has fulfilled, the one who has seen, just like it says, I, John, and the one who saw and heard. Then, Jesus, we see what he has promised in Revelation chapter 1, that with what is to soon take place, that he made it known. Now, who did he make it known to? He sent his angel to his servant, John, right? Then, just like these words say, then, in Revelation chapter 10, we see that there's an angel that's sent to John, and there is an open scroll that is fed to John. Then, to John, he's then commanded to testify to people. Then, with these words, whether one's a pastor or whether one is not a pastor, a believer, then we have to keep this in mind, correct? Yes, we have to keep it in mind. Also, with Revelation, when it fulfills that this book, the book of Revelation, just like it is stamped, it has to be stamped on our hearts and it has to then be testified to, right? That with what has been seen and heard, that's what I'm talking about. It's not talking about something else. Only, only what is seen and heard, that is what he is to testify to. Yes, that is so. Then also, in the past, Moses, he had to also hear and see and testify. And also, Jesus, according to Ezekiel chapter 3, he also came and he also testified according to that, correct? Then also, in Revelation, then the one who has seen and heard and received the open scroll, that's what's testified to. It's clear, isn't it? That this book, this book, Revelation, it is God's stamp. That this stamp, then one has to be stamped with this stamp to be sealed. Like we see in Revelation chapter 7 and 14, one who is sealed. Because a seal is a stamp, correct? So one who is stamped with this, one can be sealed. Yes. Then one who is sealed. Then is one who is not sealed, are they saved? Please think about this. I'm carrying out a life of faith to be saved, right? Then this stamp, what is it? It's the book of Revelation. And so if one adds to or takes away, one is not able to enter heaven and is cursed, correct? Then write like this, write like that. No, that's not correct. That if one just says, I'm correct, I'm correct, then that's not right, right? Then we have to, we have to know. Yes, we have to be those who know. But just with the power that's given by people, just boasting in front of people, just in ignorance, cursing others, we cannot do that. So this is not how it must be. So that's why. According to Jesus' words, one has to become lower, to lower themselves, to become humble like children, right? Yes, that is what is correct. Yes. Then ultimately, we, according to God's word, after we're created, according to God's work, with this book of Revelation, we are recreated. That up to now, it's not what we have seen up to now, but it's one who was created according to Revelation at that time. And also, according to Revelation, one is created. Then, truly, there is a new era that opens. Then, in the past, at the time of Moses. And so, we see that there are different people, and they were given the law of Moses. And before that time, they did not have the law. So they did not have the law yet. And so even if they committed sin, they would not know that it is a sin. But because there is a law, then the law becomes the standard to make known that this is a sin and this is not. So that's why if we look 
in the Old Testament, then we can know that there also is a New Testament. There's an Old Testament and a New Testament. And so Jesus, when he said that it is done, then it is that the Old Testament has been fulfilled, correct? Then Jesus, when he came, when he fulfilled that work, what did he fulfill? Then we can see it through what was written. Then also Jesus, he promised inside of the New Testament, a new covenant. Yes, that is the case. So we see in Luke chapter 22, creating a new covenant. And I spoke at this at a seminar and he made a new covenant. And that new covenant that if one adds to or subtracts from Revelation, they cannot enter into heaven. So then we can say that it's all the words of the New Testament that is this new covenant. One cannot add to it or take away. It's a stamp, right? Then one has to be sealed with Revelation so that one can be qualified to enter into heaven. So one mustn't not know, correct? Yes, that is the case. However, even in the past, before Jesus had come, then one could not know regarding the content of Ezekiel chapter 3, but because Jesus is one who was sealed and then he testified to it. So like that, also today, for a long 2,000 years that had passed, Jesus, he came at the first coming and then he ascended. Then for this time, then if one cannot be sealed with revelation, that cannot be, right? Then, if we talk about the former world that was up to Revelation chapter 6, the former world, then why do we say that it is a former world? We can know when the new world comes. So we can see that in Revelation chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars appear there. The sun, moon, and stars talking about the family of heaven, and that's recorded in Genesis. Then, the sun, moon, and stars, that when it darkens and falls, it's talking about the former world that comes to an end, right? And today, when we see this former world, where does it come up to? It's all of what is the past. Then, if we think about it at the time of Jesus' first coming, that all of what was at the time of Moses, that was what was former. That is what came to an end. And that law, that law was not the fulfillment, but it came to be fulfilled, correct? Then it's the same thing today. That Jesus, that Jesus, because he prophesied, that is not what is complete. That what is prophesied in the Old Testament has to fulfill, what is prophesied in the New Testament has to fulfill. Then through it fulfilling, that is then what is complete. Everyone understands, right? And also, clearly, that with revelation, it says that God, he comes. And also, the spiritual world of heaven comes. That only by these things happening, that heaven and earth coming together, that then it is a complete fulfillment. Yes, that is the case. Then, where our purpose, our destination is, where we have to go to, then we are able to think about this. Isn't that so? But... But there is an issue that in Matthew chapter 24, that Jesus, he answered the disciples' questions that they had asked him, when will, when will you come? And he asked regarding the signs. And they asked him about the end of age. And they're the ones who asked Jesus about this, right? Who? The disciples, correct? Yes. However, Regarding Jesus' coming, it says that not one stone here will be left on another, that everyone will be thrown down. So he says that he will come with the angels. And we can see that in Matthew chapter 24, that this is recorded, that Jesus will come with the angels. And so there's also words that are very fun that it says that even if the heavens and earth disappear, that my words will never pass away. Then, like this, then the heavens and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 
So we can see once again that in Revelation chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars, they disappear and pass away, correct? Then isn't that the heaven and earth passing away? So it's not just this, right? But we also see in Revelation chapter 21 that the he first heaven and first he earth pass away, that they disappear. So isn't that what's recorded? Yes, that is so. Then, Jesus, he said, do not block the children from coming to me. But he says, whoever humbles themselves like this little child, if they do not, they will never be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then, for us, we could have been those who have been carrying out a life of faith for a long time. But it's these people who have to hear these words and take this to heart, correct? And so, then, even like today, there are many who have gathered. Then, I ask that everyone can listen to these words. And also, these words that this person speaks, even in the letters that are written. So people just calling Shinchunji a call and saying that they are great. <laughs> Truly, it is remarkable. Then there's an expression like this, that like a speeding train as it's going, will it stop because of dog barks? With that kind of persecution, do you think that we will stop? No, we will keep going upwards. Isn't that the case? That no matter how much they bark and bark, we will rapidly grow and grow upwards. Then it is just like a barking dog, correct? Then, if that's the case, then these people, then why are they? Why are then they will wonder and come to see why are they growing so rapidly? And they will come to hear and see what kind of words are given. But without doing that, just cursing, just judging, that's not what must take place. Isn't that the case? Yes, that is so. Then this person, at the time of the June 25th war, because of the war, so I was one who had been in the countryside. But if one goes up a little bit from the countryside, so our, our country, we were not prepared at all for war at that time. And so there was very little preparations that were made. And there was hardly any combat soldiers who are ready. And so if one wants to be prepared, there has to be weapons that are prepared and also food and supplies that are prepared. But because they had just charged in, we had not time to prepare. And so we were just sent in. And so at the front lines, then it was our nation soldiers that they were at the front lines. And so you have to think why that's the case, because will someone sent by the UN put their life on the line for another country? So we, we know this case very well. And so it's a little bit removed here. And so I was in a place removed from everyone else, and I was laying down because I had no strength, because I had not had food for a long time. And so I was laying there. And so if any more time had passed before I was discovered, I wouldn't have made it. But because I was in a field where there were grass, it was hard to see me, but there was an American who saw me. And so he wrote something on, on my uniform. And so then, then they had written something so that I was transported to another place. And so then I was able to be discharged. However, for a war of that extent to take place, there has to have been preparations. But because the North, they just charged in, there was no preparations and a war took place, then what happened? Then 
even the soldiers, what they had said to the president is that is that for those who had experienced that starvation, they pointed out saying it's there's so many who died because of starvation. And so there was even like a drama that showed this. But these words are very true. That what were we supposed to eat? There was nothing to eat. And we were supposed to somehow survive. Then it was supposed to be that we had supplies, but will someone bring food to the combat soldiers? There was nothing to eat. Then what kind of extent that we protected the country, it was through blood and tears. It wasn't just with words that this country was protected. Then truly, then those who are so poor, who were nobodies, they were sent out and then they were those who died and then sent in more people to die. Then this was with blood and tears that this nation was protected. So now people can say all kinds of things, but there's nothing to say if one did not experience that, right? How this nation was protected, we must think about this. Then people think if you have money, you go to college. But at that time, what kind of college? There was nothing to eat. Then all of this in the past, we have to think about this, correct? that we cannot just be those who act according to our feelings. Then, like this, our country was then able to come out of this. And so, if this not happened, there would be nothing today. We have to think about this. Yes, we have to think about this. Then, if that was the case, then if we ask to the combat soldiers who fought in this war, they will know very well that just those who are holding a pen, just saying things, writing things, but will you know the situation of the combat soldiers? Did they give any food? Was there any food to eat? There was nothing to eat. There were no preparations that were able to be made. Then, like this, our country, this is how we are standing today. Then, if you think about even all the nations of the UN, they have different wars in different countries. Then, even through these different wars, that's when they send soldiers through the United Nations. And that's what usually takes place. Then, if we see this and think about this, if the soldiers sent by the UN come, it would be fine if they just came, but they are sent in a particular way. And so they come to the south, then what are they supposed to do? They all disperse into the mountains. And so even at this time when they are at war, then think about how many, how many people died because the enemy, the enemy is prepared in the mountains. But think about then how many people gave their lives because of this. Then there's so many people who lost their lives. Then how our nation has come to stand today, all the things that has taken place, our ancestors, how they protected this nation. We have to, we have to record this and know, correct? That at one time, we were those who were trampled by Japan and we were trampled by other nations. And it was a, such a poor and oppressed nation. Then all these things, we must know this, right? Then how many soldiers, how many soldiers lost their lives? How many people lost their lives? That A, B, C, it's not just all of this to know, but we have to truly know regarding what the ancestors, our forefathers before us had to endure to protect this nation. Then if one is a person, they would think of these things. And whether it's in the past or today, there's all these events that take place. But at that time, we were young, so we had the energy to fight. But what was there to eat? There was nothing to eat at that time. So we ate bark, we ate grass, we ate all kinds of things. And in the winter, there's hardly any grass even to eat. 
And so this is the conditions in which we fought in this war to protect our nation. Then all the young people, please think about this. Why do you think I'm speaking these words? That from, Re from Genesis to Revelation, how many apostles and martyrs gave their lives? That we can just say they're martyred, they're martyred, but what they suffered, what they did to give their lives, we have to think about this. That to that extent, that they are those who all lost their lives. And so then it was always restarted and restarted to continue this work. But when we look at Revelation, there's those who, who lose their lives, right? In Revelation chapter 14, we see that there are those who belong to God, but the ones, the ones who bow down to the enemy, they are those who come to an end, the world of religion, correct? Yes, that is so. Then in the process of this fulfilling, in Revelation chapter 1, with what must soon take place, that in order to show the servants what happened, then the angel is sent to the servant John, and John, according to what the angel makes known, then he's the one who testifies. Then John is the one who has seen the events of Revelation, right? Then, according to the standard of Revelation chapter 10, I said I would speak. So just like Jesus at the time of the first coming received the scroll of Ezekiel chapter 3, that's what he testified to. Then also, when we see in Matthew, we also see this. Then, in Revelation chapter 10, the one who received and ate the open scroll, the one who then was commanded, he then has to act according to what he's commanded. Then, with Revelation, who am I according to these words? This is what we have to think about. And also, Revelation is regarding a recreation. Then, according to Revelation, have I been recreated? That in the four Gospels, we also see that Revelation is contained inside of there. Then, then if one adds to or takes away from Revelation, then if one adds or subtracts, they cannot enter into heaven but receive curses, right? Then this person, this person, that would I like to say that all believers have added to and subtracted from Revelation? That they all have. That if you lie in front of God, will that work? You have added to and subtracted. Then, if one does not want to add or subtract from Revelation, what must they do? That today, God, that to this whole world, that for this to be testified, he has, he has prophesied for 2,000 years, correct? And so after this is spread for 2,000 years, then the end comes. Then God and his spiritual world, God who had to leave at the time of Adam, he has to come back to this earth. And also heaven which had to leave comes back. Then in order for God to return, then there has to be those who have sin resolved. Then because that's the case, then there has to be the reality of these people. Yes. Then with revelation, if one adds to or subtracts from it, one cannot enter into heaven. Then revelation, it's the stamp to be able to enter into heaven. And also, in Revelation, according to the content of Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14, one has to be sealed. A seal, meaning a stamp, right? That with the words of Revelation, it has to be sealed inside of our hearts. It has to be stamped and engraved so that we can say this is God's seal on us. Then, what life is inside is the words of life, correct? It's not it's just a seal made out of wood. That's not how one has eternal life, right? Then that's why with revelation, what is revelation speaking of? This is what we think of, right? Yes, that is so. That when we look at the Bible, we have to understand it. Because one who cannot believe in it, they also exist. And there's those who say that they believe. But whether one 
is advanced in age or has something wrong with their faith, then they are those who cannot reach the destination of their faith, correct? And so there's those who say that they believe, but there's also people who believe incorrectly. And so after the door is shut, just like we saw in Luke chapter 13, that after the door is shut, if they say, sir, open the door for us, it says that the door will not be opened. So this is what is recorded. Then why were these words given? It's because the disciples had asked to Jesus, how many are going to be saved? And that's what Jesus answered, that many will try to enter, but they will not be able to. And this is what Jesus explained. Then, then when the door is open, that is when one has to enter, but when the door is shut, one cannot enter. And also, there's one other thing, that the subjects of the kingdom, they are thrown out to the darkness. They are thrown outside where they weep and gnash their teeth. This is Matthew chapter 8, right? And those who come from the east and west take their places at the kingdom of heaven. So we see in Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 to 12, that also in the four Gospels, if we think about this, we also see in Matthew chapter 24, starting even from verse 30, that after, after God's kingdom, the temple, receives destruction, then Jesus, he comes with his angels from the east and the west and north and south to gather gather his elect, then the people of Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem, they are not the ones who receive salvation, that they have to believe according to the scriptures, right? That these words, that they take place, and after this, then Jesus comes with the angels. Then the angels, they come from the four winds and gather the elect. That's what it says, right? Then, if that's so, then from this content, we have to judge correctly that only with these things take place, that this first, then that next, then after this. This is what we have to be able to discern. Yes. Just automatically saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I'll save because I believe in Jesus, I'll enter heaven. Is that how you enter into heaven? That the word is a path to heaven, isn't it? That it is a narrow and small road. That, just like it says in Matthew chapter 7, it is a narrow road. Then why is it narrow? Because it is so difficult. It is hard. That with all of this, one has to keep all these things to be able to enter into heaven. Then one has to undergo much suffering even receiving persecution, isn't that the case? Then, one has to have a true faith that one does not stop just because of that level of persecution. Whether they persecute or not, whether the dog barks or not, the speeding train will keep going, right? Yes, that is so. Then, then we can see how much has to take place if we read from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22. There is so much that has to take place. And so it says that even the donkey knows his master, but my people, they do not, they do not know me. So even Isaiah, Isaiah spoke these words, correct? And so he also is making known regarding what time that he is a person of, as we see in Isaiah chapter 1. So what he has seen, it's a vision concerning Judah, Judah and Jerusalem. And so he prefaces it, and so then he then makes known the vision. So this is what Isaiah spoke. And so what he recorded in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, we see there. If we see there, there's also the work of a war as well. So it's because people, the believers are those who have been corrupted and they betray. So there's this content of even war that takes place. So just like this, whether it's in the past or today, 
It's the world of religion that there is a war and that is unavoidable. That because there is two elements, that is why there is a war that takes place. So because then war takes place, then one cannot add or subtract to two revelation. One cannot add to it, nor can they take away from it. But like a stamp, one has to be created according to revelation. Then, of course, in revelation, there is the betrayers, destroyers, and savior. Yes. However, <laughs> this person, you have to right, realize that it is, it is a savior that you want to meet, right? So there's the betrayers and the destroyers, but we have to meet the Savior. So the betrayers are the ones who went against God. They're not those who did not, not believe, but then there's also the destroyers, right? So the destroyers, they're the ones who cry out, cult, cult, correct? So why do they say cult? It's because they're trying to kill. Then, just like that, then a new era opens. When revelation fulfills, then we can know that all of this is what takes place today. Like Matthew chapter 24, it takes place. That Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the end of age. Yes, it is. So like this, with the book of Revelation and also the four Gospels, we have to read it. And with what's recorded inside of it, What's recorded in it? The content inside that, who am I according to these words that are recorded? We have to think about it at least once, correct? That heaven and eternal life, it is not something that is just simple, correct? Then the issue is that in order to enter into the glory of God, if we are carrying on a life of faith for that purpose, then these words, one by one, truly, we have to hear these words and believe. Yes, we must. Yes, this is the case. Just regarding it as a joke, we mustn't do that, right? Then today, for Revelation to fulfill, starting from Revelation chapter 1 and on, one by one, they all have to fulfill. And so all of it has to fulfill step by step. Then up to what point? Up to what point? Then even God, Jesus, what they did, who they have come to on this earth, we have to know according to the scriptures, right? But with the heart, with the heart not desiring to know, those who do not know, someone carrying out a faith like that, that is a faith that cannot be pleasing, correct? Then even if Jesus came, one would not be able to know and recognize, right? Then with revelation, when Jesus appears, then what takes place is that Jesus, he establishes the seven messengers, right? Like we see in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the seven messengers, that they, they're the ones who are established and it would have been fine if they had done continued, but they are the ones who became part of the Nicolaitans. So if it says Nicolaitans, it's not just one individual, but they were the ones who then received the teachings. They received the false teachings. And so because the Nicolaitans fed this to the messengers, they received it, what must have happened. And so those seven messengers that were established, they then have to come to an end. And so then, Jesus, then he chose one individual as an advocate in Revelation chapter 1, and he's then the one who sends the letters, right? And so this individual is one who is on this earth, and then Jesus, he's the one in heaven, in the spiritual world. Then this one person, he's commanded to write the letters, so he writes them and sends them. And so then we see that when there was a sound from heaven, it was then this individual who was on this earth and Jesus in heaven. But then these were the words given to him that come up here, right? Then, of course, whether he went up in spirit or in flesh, it's not what's recorded. It's not said there. But if he says, come up here, then he went up. Then when he went up, what did he see? He saw God's throne, right? That with God's throne, 
We also see in Revelation chapter 14. And we also see it in Revelation chapter 15. So, we wish we could see God's throne, right? So, it's regarding God's throne that he saw. That God's throne, that God's throne is what one is able to see only by the permission of the heavens. And so he's seeing the throne of God, and he also saw the four living creatures, right? Then the four living creatures are the commanding angels of heaven. And so then they are even also those who are used to carry out judgment. And that's why in Revelation 4, he saw all these things. But there's so many who, without even going to heaven to see, they say what they see. But with Revelation, the one who has promised it, that's what is in the Bible. So in order to fulfill what is in the Bible, the heavens are so busy working, right? And so that's why the spirits in heaven are working so busy. They have to also fight. And they also have to do the work of gathering. So gathering from the north, south, east, and west, gathering and finding all the people together. So they're so busy with this work. Then it's not just that he saw that they're busy, like lightning, but he also saw. And he also heard some words, correct? That God, God is to come. So he saw what he needed to see in Revelation chapter 4. He went up to heaven and he saw these things. But he then also saw one more thing in Revelation chapter 5, that there was a seal, a seal with seven scrolls in the right hand of God, right? But that scroll, it says that no one on earth, in heaven or on earth or under the earth, could open the scroll. And so John, John who went up to heaven, what did he do? He wept. So he had, he wept and he wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll. Then Jesus, Jesus was then able to take the scroll. Then what did he do with the scroll? Like we see that he took the scroll and then he carries out the work of judgment. There are seven seals that are on the scroll, but as he takes one seal off, we see that then there is a rider on a horse. And that rider has a bow, correct? And a bow is used in war, right? And we also see later that the sun, moon, and stars, they darken and fall. And everything comes to an end, correct? So if this is the case, then the events of Revelation chapter 6, as they take place, then it's the first heaven and first earth that pass away, Revelation chapter 21, right? Then there has to be a new heaven and new earth that's created, right? Then pastors, let's think about this deeply. What is the first heaven and first earth and what is the new heaven and new earth? This new heaven and new earth, it's not just it because one says it is. That before new heaven and new earth appears, it's the first heaven and first earth that has to end. So even how many thoughts we have in our head, we have to be able to distinguish this correctly. That those who don't, who are unbelievers, then everyone, everyone, when Jesus comes, we have to believe that Jesus, he, just like he came at the first coming and God was working through him, they didn't believe then we have to believe according to the Bible that everyone carries around a Bible right like this. Yes, that is the case. Then there's a process of what needs to fulfill. And in Revelation, starting from chapter 1, one by one, it is in there. And so there has to be a reality to it all. So if there's just prophecy, it's just words that are written on a page. But when it fulfills, there is a reality of these words that appear, correct? Then, if we look in Revelation, starting from chapter 1 all the way to chapter two, 22, then there is one person who saw all these things. And that's why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, it is I, John, who is the one who heard and saw these things, correct? 
Then the one person who saw and heard these things in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, he is then commanded to testify to the churches. Then, pastors, in the past and in the present, just all the things that you have done, it's not to talk about those things, saying that I'm orthodox, you're called, all this has to come to an end. That whether you say to Jesus, cult, cult, just like at the time of the first coming, calling Jesus a cult, that then is going against God, correct? That you're, you're being used by the Spirit going against God, correct? That what is a cult, one has to know. Just because one says it's a cult, that's not the case. But using the Bible as a standard, then one has to distinguish who is orthodox and who is a cult. Then everyone, this person, I have said up to now, let's take an exam. But everyone, why do you just keep using your mouth to say all these words and not able to enter into heaven? But we have to resolve this. We'll know if we take an exam, right? We'll know who is a cult. This is how we'll know. then this world is truly in a strange state, truly is. Then these things have to be resolved. And so all our pastors, so everyone is saying such, such words loudly, but you have to listen, right? Because the scriptures don't lie. Isn't that the case? Yes. So, truly, like we see in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the seven messengers, that, well, if one knows who they are, you'll be able to know their names, what they look like. You'll be able to show a picture of them. They'll be able to say these things. Yes, that is how it is. And so, the person who has seen the seven messengers, in Revelation chapter 10, he's the one who received and ate the open scroll. Is it someone else who ate the open scroll? No, it's not. And so it has to be clear and certain that starting from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22, that one has to know clearly that it is this one person to testify to what he has seen and heard. Then if one testifies to what one has not seen and heard, then it is incorrect. Then, like in the past, <laughs> I don't know how they did it without calculators, but today, at a time like this, one has to know what is a lie and incorrect. Then, because we have started a life of faith, then we mustn't think about all these other things, but what relationship I have with the word of the scriptures, the Bible that the 12 tribes are created according to the Bible, then it's not before these 12 tribes are created, but at the time when the 12 tribes are created, at this time when they are fulfilled, then this world of religion, of this life of faith that has been carried out, we have to realize that what comes to an end in Revelation chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars, that they come to an end, then it's because they committed sin, right? To say that they didn't commit sin? No. Then that's why in Revelation chapter 7, it starts anew. So it's not just automatically, but they have to be sealed. Then if one is not sealed, then they cannot belong to the 12 tribes, right? That one, to become part of the 12 tribes of Revelation, it's because one is sealed. And this is what only can take place at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. It is not the former world. Yes, we must know this. Anyone just saying, cult, cult, just saying all these words without knowing anything, just like a fool, just cursing and insulting people. We mustn't do this, correct? Then how would one know that what someone else is a cult? Because they don't know. Then there are those, there are those who are a super cult who do not know anything. Isn't that so? That all of these things have to take place. Then, 
Just running off their mouths, saying that they believe, just saying things without truly knowing. Then, in Revelation chapter 10, Jesus, with this book, because one by one he opened the seals and what what has fulfilled then we can see with then the open scroll what happens in Revelation chapter 10 it is given to one person it's fed to him right and because it's fed to him it's in his stomach so first it was in God's hand so then because then it was given to Jesus then it's not in God's hand anymore then, because then Jesus passed it on to the angel, it's not in Jesus' hand. And the angel then is the one who then gave it to the servant. Then it's not in the angel's hand anymore. Then where is the book? Like we see in Revelation chapter 10, it's in the stomach of one person, right? Yes, the one person. Then to that one person, one has to hear the testimony that is given to all the people's nations, languages, and kings. And so, one has to ask, who must I find and learn from? One has to do according to the Bible. That according to the promises of God, yes, we must act according to this. Just saying words that make no sense, saying false words, all of this is what comes to an end. This is the era of fulfillment, correct? Then, if one is the one who has received the words of the scroll, it has to then be in that person and then in one's heart. And if it's in one's heart, one can be tested on it, right? But just saying, cult, cult, then people who say this, then I have proposed, let's take an exam. Then Jesus also, he's one, according to Ezekiel chapter 3, received the words of the open scroll and testified, right? Isn't that the case? Then we see in Matthew chapter 1 that that's the case, right? Then just like this, if one has received the open scroll, then it would come out of his mouth, right? Because if it's not inside of you, it's not able to come out. Then, like it's recorded in Revelation, that one cannot add to or subtract from Revelation. All of this events is what takes place. Then, with that, with what is in Revelation, then one has to confirm whether this person is that person of Revelation. But without knowing anything, and so, if we think about in, in our language, so just following after these curse words and saying them, we can't be like that. So one truly must know and then act. Then today, then even if everyone in the world says something, God is one who is unchanging. It can, God cannot be added to or subtracted from, from. All of this takes place. Then, if we go inside of Revelation and see, then in Revelation chapter 7, we see regarding those who are sealed. It's the 144,000. The 144,000 who are sealed. And then we see them in Revelation chapter 14. And we see that the song that they sing, it says no one could learn the song says that only the 144,000 could learn this song. Then, all the pastors of the world, this song, this new song that they are singing, why? Why are not other people able to sing this song, not know this song, and it's only those who have the 12 tribes who can sing this song? I would love to hear your answer. Isn't that so? Then everyone, when we see in Revelation chapter 14, those who sing the new song, they are the ones who are sealed in Revelation chapter 7. Because they are sealed, they are able to sing the new song. The new song is the content of what's sealed, right? Then you can see very clearly how they are distinguished. But even if you have been um, in ministry for thousands of years, that's not what's recorded inside of the scriptures. 
then even if your feelings are offended, one has to verify through the scriptures. One must verify. So, in Revelation chapter 7, there is the work of sealing and those who are sealed. Then they have to speak with what they are sealed with. So after they are sealed, then they have to share and testify to those words. And God and Jesus are together with them. And so just like Jesus, he was able to receive the open scroll and then testify that even today, it's the same thing. So then Jesus is together with these people today. Isn't that the case? So, then God and Jesus are together with those who are sealed today. So, because then, the one person who has seen the entire events, he's able to testify to the events, correct? If there is no reality, then everything is in vain. Then there's a reality that has to appear according to the prophecy. Then when the fulfillment, the reality is testified to, then one has to believe. Then in Revelation chapter 7, that there's a sealed 12 tribes, correct? Then these people, ultimately, they are the ones who are saved. That they are the ones who have revelation inside of them. Then when I asked the pastors, what tribe are you in? I still haven't been able to hear their answer. Then if one doesn't belong to the 12 tribes, can you say that you're a part of the family of heaven? Then in Revelation chapter 14, chapter 7, you cannot say that you're a part of the family of heaven. You are not able to. Then those who are sealed, then you have to understand that. That one who is born of God's seed, a family and child of God, one has to be sealed. Then one cannot say anything if one is not sealed. One has to be born of God's seed, right? Then to be born of God's seed, it means to know the word of God, to be stamped with the word of God. Then this is how one becomes a child of God and belongs to the kingdom of God. Then like this, in Shincheonji, we have lecturers who one by one in detail teach these things. Then you'll know very well if you learn. So if we do mathematics, addition and subtraction, we learn it very systematically, right? So plus and minus, you get an answer, right? Then what is more important than that is the word of life. Then why does one not try to know? Just thinking that one is fine without knowing, but one cannot add or subtract. Then just like this, one has to be stamped exactly. Yes. We must. Because if it says one cannot add to or subtract, then one has to know you cannot enter heaven if you have. Then, with God's word, the Bible, it says then that it is according to the word of God that one is judged. Then, what can one answer when one is judged? Even if you shout and make a lot of noise, one, one has nothing to say in front of the work of judgment that is recorded. Have you been sealed or not? What will you say? Then someone who is not sealed, they cannot say that they've been sealed. Then, just saying that one is sealed when they're not, one will truly receive judgment then, right? Then that's why at Kosong, so at Kosong, it's being created that there is the 12 tribes, and then also we can know that the 12 tribes do the work of judgment. And so there's what's created there is that it's before the book that one is, is judged. So this is what's created at Kosong so that everyone can see this. Then, with what is fulfilled according to Revelation, it's all being created there so that one can see. 
And so this is being created, then all of us, we cannot be those who deceive ourselves, but it has to be the word that is sealed inside of our hearts. And this word has to be what is inside of us to become a walking Bible, right? And being someone who doesn't know, but trying to teach someone else, we can't be like that, right? Then it's me, myself, first who has to perceive, and then I can teach. Yes, that is how it has to be. Then, in the past, we had thought that these words are what's to fulfill in the future, but today, it's not the case anymore. That one by one, with revelation, there's a fulfillment to everything, then we have to also teach the fulfillment. Prophecy plus fulfillment equals the answer. Yes, this is how we have to teach. Then in Mission Center, there's beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Then in beginning, one by one, it's like learning the ABCs. Then we learn regarding the, what's the prophecies inside of the Bible. Then one by one, they're being taught. Then later, in intermediate, you can see fulfillment. What's the fulfillment of these words? And then ultimately, we have to know all of the reality, right? Because God prophesied what he will fulfill, then when it's fulfilled, the realities appear. Isn't that the case? Yes, that has to happen. Then, what is the answer? Then, one can be offended, but one cannot then ignore the reality just because of that. So we cannot teach in a way that one is offended, but to make it known to them. So also, in the past, Jesus and his disciples, at that time, when they made known the reality, the Pharisees, when they hear that, they will they stay still? They say, oh, we want to kill you. So that's the words that have to be spoken, though. The word has to be taught. However, ultimately, because it is the era of fulfillment, the realities have to be made known. So the realities, as they're made known, it has to be believed. And ultimately, one has to be able to contain the fulfillment. So, what time is it? Wow! I, I thought I'm 30 minutes behind of what I thought. So, everyone, please stop boasting unnecessarily, but let's go inside of the word. Just saying, here's good, there's good, not like that, but it's God's word that is good, right? That let's all go inside of the word together. And if what there are things that I know that I have to then share it and make it known. Then if we have to be like this, but instead just boasting and boasting, bragging about oneself, we cannot be like this. Let's not be like this. That's what we're saying, but let's lower ourselves. Let's humble ourselves like a little child again and again, making the word our standard and carrying out a life of faith, right? That that is exactly what Shin Chunji is making known. So Shin Chunji meaning Shin meaning new and heaven and earth. So new heaven and new earth. It's nothing else. Then if we can say where is it in the scripture, we can say it's there. It's in Revelation chapter 21. And the 12 tribes. What tribe and what tribe of the 12 tribes? Where is it in the scriptures? Yes, it's in there. Look, it's in Revelation chapter 7. I can show you then it's according to the scriptures we have to be created. Whether it's just person's authority, power, it cannot be like that, but it is an organization according to the Bible. Then it's each tribe, 12,000. And then for 12 tribes, 144,000. Then it cannot stray from the Bible, but has to follow what is inside and recorded inside of the scriptures. So just boasting and saying, cult, cult, are they crazy? That's just like calling God a cult. So you cannot call God a cult, right? Isn't that the case? Yes. 
then these scriptures, there is recorded new heaven, new earth, Xin and then new heaven, new earth, what's created, then God and the heavens come together and be with this place, right? That's what's recorded. But saying that that's bad, that's a cult. Is it a cult just because we say so? Do I just say, yes, you're a cult? No. So we have to know, right? That that nation, that kingdom that God wants to create, he has made known. And he said, it's the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. The temple, the tabernacle of the testimony. That is where God is at. And that's where all nations come and worship God at this temple. Then this temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, why are you saying that it's bad? Why is it being called a cult? A one who calls it a cult is the cult. Xin Chunji, just calling Xin Chunji, calling a cult. But Xin Chunji is what appears when all that is former passes away. Then why is it being called a cult? Then why are you calling Xin Chunji a cult? So everyone think about this. Without knowing what Xin Chunji is, without not with not knowing what the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is, that's what is the problem. It's inside of the Bible. So it has to be in front of the Bible that we distinguish. Yes, that is what has to take place. So the difference between carrying on a life of faith well and not well, it is a, there is a standard, right? And so we have to always know that with a life of faith, it's not just calling Xin Chunji a cult just because one doesn't know. But the 144,000, the 12 tribes, if one does not belong to them, one cannot belong to the family of heaven. No matter how much they say things and boast, they cannot become the family of heaven, right? And so in Revelation chapter 7, chapter 14, that's how one has to belong to God. So one who is not part of the family of heaven, they come to an end like in Revelation chapter 6. Then, why does one not act according to the Bible? This is what I'm saying. Then, this is what the Bible is asking to us with what is true and with what is false. The Bible is making this known. Then, knowing this, we truly, before God, we have to become those who are complete believers and put in effort, right? So I'm significantly over time. But even in the future, let's do God's work well together. Come, thank you, everyone. And we'll pray together. Heavenly Father God, whom we are truly thankful to, on this blessed service day, all the saints of Shinchunji were able to come before your throne to offer a service unto you. Won't you please receive our service? And also, Father, with what we need, won't you please fill us up? Father, we are your children born of your seed, and we ask that you would allow for us to shine a light to this whole world so that we are able to offer glory to you. Though we are so weak and insufficient, God, there are so many things that we are lacking. Well, Father, please clothe us so that we can be a complete believer before you and help us to be those who are complete in your sight. With the love and the grace that you are pouring out to us, we pray also that it can be spread to this whole world. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus who died for us. Amen. Yes, we'll conclude the word here and have the presider come up. Thank you. Yes, I, I believe that we receive much grace from the message. Please sit comfortably. Being.
For all the pastors who are here today, hearing the words of our promised pastor and all those who believe in God, the family of Shin Chun Ji, for all of that, we believe that he gave and testified passionately. Just for our promised pastor for giving this, we also applaud him for this. At this place, for all the pastors before us, please thank you so much for opening your hearts and receiving these words. And for all the pastors who are running diligently for God, we're publicizing this, this testimony to the entire world, and we're also seeing it on YouTube, all the pastors all around the world. And we pray that God receives us with much joy. For the pastors of all the churches, we pray that this can be a place that God sees as such glorifying place. For all the denominations, all the different religions, this is the very reality of the testimony of Revelation. So please receive these words with an open heart. And if you have any questions or want to know more, please reach out to Shin Shukji. And we pray that you reach out and are able to receive these very words. So we pray that this is a place that is full of much many pastors. We do not receive money for these very words at Shin Ji. We're not a place that receives any money for this. We're giving this for free. There are many of those who receive a lot of grace from these words and we'll give it to, to them for free so that everyone can hear these words of life. So through faith and through God, we believe that this work will go well. The word is the path to heaven, our precious pastors. At this place, we pray that the word comes together with you, and we pray that we can all become one together to be God's kingdom. And for all the reporters, even, even if we may not know all the word, it might be might have been a little bit difficult to hear this, but as you receive this word and receive this report, we pray that you're able to report it correctly. This is the duty of a reporter to be able to report truthfully without any false truth. So we pray that that is the duty that you can fulfill as a reporter every day. Where in this place, other than Shinchunji, will people be offering up a service every day like this? This is such a special place here. For everyone, for being here, if there's something that I don't understand, then know that there is beginning, intermediate, and advanced that you can learn this very word. For the 12 tribes, the brothers of the 12 tribes, we know that we're diligently and fervently offering up the service. We know that God is so pleased with this. We're not going back into the world, but we're also evangelizing to the world, and that is what God is so pleased with. So let's pray that everyone can hear this word and come together to this place. So for our promised pastor, He's, he's already traveled the country many times testifying to this. And just like this, let's all receive God in that way. What time is it? <laughs> yes, what time is it? Yes, I'm so sorry. For the precious words to our chairman, we would like to we would like to present this bouquet of flowers to express our immense amount of gratitude as well as pledge to all be true believers. Let us all let's bring chairman to the front. Chairman. Thank you so much for testifying to all of this, all the churches. We will be a church that loves God. Chairman, we love you so much.
Perriman. Thank you so much. Yes, now we will sing a little give praise day by day. Let's all sit comfortably, please. Hallelujah. Yes. This concludes our service, and we will now close with the chant of victory. Shincheonji, motto of victory, begin. Shincheonji, army of the 12 tribes, heaven's army. Raise heaven's sword and stand. Raise the sword of wisdom high and shout. The glory of victory to our God. Hallelujah. And now we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, at this time, let us return glory to our Father God together with the promised pastor. Please all stand.
Yes. We, Shinchenji, that we have to be acknowledged that even each person has to believe according to their own faith. They will not be forced. So we have to truly have a heart to believe in the truth and with what is recorded inside of the Bible, making the Bible our standard. Then for those who truly desire to learn, then even the materials for beginning, intermediate, and advanced will be sent to you. And so it is then according to one's desire. And we will not force anyone. So I hope that everyone can understand. Then even today, to our Father God, who poured out His grace unto us, will return glory to Him. The kingdom, power, and glory be to our Holy Father God eternally. Hallelujah. Amen.